Hello everyone just podcast TV is here please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on new contents. Episode 12 Brutal As for Marcus's threat, Amadeus didn't take into heart at all. He was no longer the trash that he had been 20 days ago. He was now a 5th Empyrean soldier. In addition to his powerful bloodline, Amadeus was placed in the knighthood of the Order. He was worthy of being called an expert. Marcus's elder brother was also a knight of the Order. Even if Marcus's elder brother was stronger than Amadeus, He couldn't be that strong. It wasn't that Amadeus didn't have the ability to fight him. If Amadeus was given a little more time, it was still uncertain who would be the one to teach him a lesson. Amadeus was still unable to vent his anger. He lifted his foot and stepped on Marcus. He didn't hold anything back at all. Every one of his punches and kicks contained hundreds of cauldrons of strength. He could easily break a millstone-sized rock into pieces. Brutal. Amadeus is too savage. He's going to completely cripple Marcus. The servants in the surroundings couldn't help but shiver. They looked at Amadeus, who continued to beat Marcus. He looked like a devil from the abyss of hell. They swore in their hearts that they would never offend this powerful man in the future. Marcus is really miserable. He is finished. I'm afraid Marcus won't be able to get out of bed for the rest of his life. Many of the servant disciples' eyes flashed with a trace of pity. But for some reason, they were secretly delighted in their hearts. Most of them had suffered losses from Marcus before. Ha <laughs> ha This is truly satisfying. Amadeus looked at Marcus, who had completely fainted like a pile of mud under his feet. Amadeus, on the other hand, felt relaxed and his entire body was filled with indescribable happiness. He had vented his anger and all of the grievances he had suffered in Marcus's hands in the past year. Not only that, Amadeus also found that after this battle, his wild bull pulse opening fist had improved a little bit. There were a few moves that he hadn't understood in the past, but his last fight had given him a breakthrough. He had also vaguely seen a trace of the profound mysteries of the transformation stage. Amadeus's gaze shifted. He looked at Numitor, and the others were shouting for Marcus to kill him. Marcus deserved to die. And these villains who did evil deeds were unforgivable. They relied on Marcus to support them. All these years, they had done many bad things and had bullied many of their fellow disciples. Amadeus, please spare our lives. We don't want to go against you. It was Marcus. It was he who forced us to do all of this. It was Marcus who forced us to do all of this. And this Numitor, 
He was the one who instigated us to come here. Amadeus, you have to believe us. Amadeus, you have to believe us. Amadeus, you have to believe us. That's right. That's right. Amadeus, these things have nothing to do with us. These things really have nothing to do with us. These things definitely have nothing to do with us. In an instant, Marcus's dozen underlings fell to their knees, kneeling in front of Amadeus. They begged Amadeus to get up and attribute all the bad things to Marcus and Numitor. You. You too. Numitor, who was on the stretcher, was so angry that his heart was pounding. He spat out a mouthful of blood. He rolled his eyes and fainted again. Were they the ones who forced you to do this? Amadeus smiled coldly. Disdain flashed across his eyes. Did they really think that he was an idiot? They were very happy when they bullied Amadeus these past few days. It was time for him to take revenge. Very soon, the sound of terrified wailing could be heard once again from the hillside, after it had just calmed down. The wailing started countless of night owls on the mountain. The night sky was still the same, but no one knew that the fates of several people from the Red Reed Peak had quietly changed. The Red Reed Peak was close to the top of the mountain. There was an independent courtyard the size of a few acres of farmland with exquisite decorations and rockery gardens and ponds. This was the residence of the most powerful person in the Red Reed Peak, Master Aurelius Candida. The next morning, the manager's courtyard welcomed a group of wounded people. Two of them were wrapped in gaze like mummies and they were miserably lying on two stretchers. The two of them were Marcus and his number one fighter, Numitor. Beside the two of them were Marcus's subordinates. Each of them were wrapped in bandages and plaster. Of course, compared to Marcus and Numitor, their injuries were much lighter. In front of the group of wounded people stood a middle-aged man in his 40s. He was dressed in brocade clothes and had a refined appearance. Although his temples had been slightly frosted with gray, there was a faint heroic spirit between his brows, which was still very attractive. This man was none other than the master of the Red Reed Peak. Manager Aurelius Candida. What's going on? Could it be that the servant from another peak came to provoke us? Aurelius Candida looked at Marcus, who was no different from a mummy. He was both shocked and angry. Marcus was the number one person in Red Reed Peak. Aurelius Candida had been counting on Marcus to earn face for him in Bronze Warrior's Lane, ten days later. But now Marcus had become like this. Not to mention, giving face to Aurelius Candida. It would be great if Marcus didn't have to give face to Aurelius Candida. Master Aurelius... You have to make the decision for us. That bastard Amadeus is simply not human. 
Marcus and his men immediately told Aurelius Candida everything that had happened the day before. In their minds, Amadeus was an unpardonable villain who had committed all kinds of crime. Amadeus? Aurelius Candida frowned, and a trace of doubt appeared in his eyes. Numitor wasn't a weakling. He was at the peak of the Third Empyrean. He was only one step away from entering the Bronze Warrior's lane. Marcus was even more extraordinary. He was only a step away from the Fifth Empyrean. Within the servant disciples of the Mithrarian warrior sect. Someone who was able to injure him so badly was definitely not an unknown person. However, he recalled the top experts of all the Appian Way. But he did not remember who Amadeus was. Master Aurelius, it's either the experts from the other peaks or Amadeus from the Red Reed Peak. Marcus got too excited and he tore his stitches, causing him to suck in a cold breath of air. Amadeus? Of our peak? What? Aurelius Candida's eyes widened in disbelief, as if he had seen a ghost from the legends. He had some impression of Amadeus. He was a shy and submissive young man with low talent. He was one of the candidates who would definitely be chased away this year. Any random servant disciple could defeat him. Master Aurelius, it's that little brute. You have to make the decision for us. Marcus cried again. His voice, sad. Is it really him? But how is it possible? His reason told him that Marcus and the others said was true. After all, it was not something glorious, and they did not have the courage to lie to him about it. However, he still could not accept it. Amadeus was a famous piece of trash in Red Reed Peak. He was almost certain to be kicked out of the house. Marcus, on the other hand, was the number one person in Red Reed Peak. Candida always placed high hopes on him. Between the two of them, the difference was like heaven and earth. Logically speaking, even if a hundred of Amadeus's joined forces, they wouldn't be able to defeat Marcus alone. Master Aurelius, what I said is the truth. There is not a single lie. Seeing that Candida still didn't believe him, Marcus immediately became anxious. I swear. Looks like all of this is real. Even if Aurelius could not accept it, he had to believe that Marcus and the others had really been hurt by Amadeus. I really didn't expect that such a useless person would grow to such a stage. Please help me. Amadeus doesn't care about the friendship between fellow disciples. He seriously injured us like this. He is simply insane. As soon as Marcus's voice faded, his underlings immediately became excited and echoed him. That's right. Please help us, Master Aurelius. If we don't punish Amadeus, I won't accept it. If we don't punish Amadeus, the heavens...
Ravens won't tolerate it. They will not. All of you, shut up. Aurelius Candida's expression suddenly turned cold. Someone, go and call Amadeus over. Upon hearing this, the corners of Marcus's mouth curled up. And a trace of pride appeared on his face. There was even a hint of complacency. Little brute, let's see how you're going to deal with this. Very quickly, Amadeus was led by a servant in the courtyard on the peak of the mountain. As Amadeus approached, Marcus and the others all wore looks of hatred. If looks could kill, Amadeus would have been torn into pieces. It was this little brute who had cruelly crippled all of Marcus's limbs, making it difficult for him to continue training to be a gladiator in the life. Glancing indifferently at Marcus and the others, Amadeus respectfully bowed to Aurelius Candida. But a hint of vigilance flashed across his eyes. He vaguely understood the purpose of Marcus and the others. He clenched his fists tightly. If Master Aurelius wanted to avenge Marcus and the others, he would not just sit there and wait for his death. Amadeus, did you hurt Marcus and the others? Aurelius Candida looked at Amadeus anxiously. Does this Master Aurelius really want to stand up for Marcus? Amadeus's heart tightened, but he still nodded his head. In the battle last night, everyone had gathered. Even if he wanted to deny it, it would be useless. <laughs> Seeing Amadeus nod and admit it, Aurelius Candida suddenly burst into laughter. Great. To be able to defeat Marcus with one punch? Among all the knights in the order, I'm afraid there's are only a few who can defeat you. In the Battle of the Warriors competition, ten days hence, you will definitely be able to help me get a good result. Maybe even make it into the top ten. At that time, our red reed peak will grow steeper. If only by one man. Aurelius Candida couldn't help but laugh out loud. This time I'm really going to be rich. Master Aurelius, didn't you call me here to make the decision for them? Amadeus couldn't react in time. It did not look like Master Aurelius was here to cause trouble for him. Amadeus, our order never forbade competition between servant disciples. They have fallen into this state today because they are not good at learning. I can't blame others. So how can I be someone who doesn't know what's right and what's wrong? Aurelius Candida laughed lightly. He did not have time to reward Amadeus. How could he blame a genius like Amadeus for a few useless people? There are still ten days left until the Battle of the Bronze Warriors Lane. I'll give you a vacation for these ten days. You don't have to be a servant anymore. I'll let you prepare with all your might so that you can advance further and achieve even more outstanding results. Amadeus was delighted when he heard that. Without the cumbersome enlistment, his progress would definitely increase by another level. The contrary, Marcus and the other faces had turned deathly pale. But it was very obvious that this was not the end of it. 
Aurelius Candida turned around and looked at Marcus and the others. His face changed from a gentle breeze to a bone-piercing winter wind. Marcus, Numitor, and the rest of you, listen up. Although you are injured, you have to work. You'll have to think of a way yourselves. After saying that, Master Aurelius looked at Amadeus, and an inexplicable smile appeared at the corners of his eyes. Amadeus understood that this was Master Aurelius trying to show him good intentions. You. Marcus glared at Aurelius Candida. He could no longer bear the continuous attacks. He spat out a mouthful of blood, rolled his eyes, and fainted. What are you guys waiting for? Are you guys free? Aren't you gonna go do your chores? Following Master Aurelius' shout, Numitor and the rest of Marcus's underlings immediately scattered, leaving the unconscious Marcus lying on the stretcher, all alone. It was very miserable. Someone come and take this trash away. Don't leave this eyesore here. Episode 13 Geniuses Gathered Marcus slowly opened his eyes and found that he had already arrived outside his courtyard. There was no one around him, though there were a few crows circling in the air. It was a miserable sight. He stared blankly at the door. Suddenly, his face was filled with ferocious enmity, like a malicious ghost from hell. Amadeus, if I don't get my revenge, I swear, I won't be a human. Ugh, little brute, I will definitely kill you. In a secret cave at the back of the Red Reed Peak, Amadeus was sitting cross-legged with his eyes closed. His handsome face was brimming with confidence. Tomorrow would be the annual competition in the Mithraea Warrior Sect. In ten days, Amadeus' ability had improved by leaps and bounds. He was only a step away from the sixth layer. At the moment, he was trying to break through the pulse opening stage six layer. The blessings of Mithraea in his body were like a surging river. Amadeus let out a long roar and suddenly stood up from the ground. His feet moved and he immediately leaped forward. As his training improved, Amadeus's strength and speed both increased by leaps and bounds. Every step he took was more than 30 feet. Like a sh- <laughs> Sharp arrow, he pierced through the air. And in less than a second, he had already left the deep cave. Amadeus let out a loud roar. And his temperament was that like of a tiger. He suddenly rushed into the dense forest filled with weeds and trees. All the bones in his body exploded. And his muscles and skin were surging. Amadeus kicked out with his leg, and a heart-wrenching sound burst out in the air. A very thick tree was completely broken by Amadeus's violent leg strength, and it collapsed with a loud bang. Immediately after that, Amadeus used both his hands and feet 
to throw out more than 10 punches and kicks. He was like a wood cutter. His fists were like iron fists. His legs were like knives and axes. And the towering ancient trees were chopped down one by one. After finishing the set of Wild Bull Pulse opening fist, Amadeus's body remained motionless. Like that of a thousand foot tall mountain. The airflow above his head was surging, and it actually faintly condensed in the shadow of a lion. It looked up at the sky and let out a long roar, and its might shook the world. All of a sudden, Amadeus's inner rage changed. His hair flew up into the air and steamed rose from it. He waved his palm, and heat waves gushed out, burning the air like boiling water. All of a sudden, Amadeus struck out with a huge palm print. It was several feet in size, and it was entirely red. It was scorching hot, and could burn anything in the world. It was the yellow level inferior martial technique that Marcus had relied on. It was in order to become famous, and that was called the Ardent Sun Art. After Amadeus had crippled Marcus that night, all of his techniques had been plundered by Amadeus, and one of them was the Sun Palm. The next moment, the Sun Palm suddenly exploded and turned into terrifying golden flames. Mushroom clouds rose into the air. The trees, shrubs, flowers, and rocks within a radius of a hundred feet were all burned to ashes. Amadeus looked at the scorched earth in front of him and smiled with satisfaction. He can complete the sun palm, but he had not mastered it yet. Once it was fully mastered, or even reached perfection, its power would be unimaginable. If he struck out with his palm, the area would be within a 300-foot radius, which would be turned into a great sea of fire. Dad, let me make up for your regret. Tomorrow, in the competition, I will definitely stand out and shock the world. A bright light flashed in Amadeus's eyes and an incomparable heroic spirit suddenly rose in his heart. The Mithraea warrior sect had over a thousand hundred servant disciples, but most of them sat at a lower level of skill. But Amadeus was not an ordinary servant of disciple. His skills were rare, and rivaled that of those of the Red Reed Peak. And he came from a strong line of warriors, dating back generations. After dawn, Master Aurelius Candida of the Red Reed Peak, who wore embroidered clothes and had an extraordinary bearing, and who had a pair of slightly frosted sideburns, led a few servant disciples down to the Red Reed Peak. One of them was dressed in white, and he was about 15 years old. His young and tender face carried a maturity and steadiness that did not match his age. 
there was also a hint of killing intent. This person was none other than Amadeus. There were five people behind Amadeus. One of them was around 20 years old. His thick black eyebrows were like two sharp swords, slanted to the sides of his temples. His eyes were glowing red. He looked so evil and proud. He held his back straight. His lips were slightly curled. And there was a wicked smile on his face. It attracted people's attention, as did his long, flowing hair. He radiated evil. He was Pollock's who wanted to compete with Marcus to become the number one person in the Red Reed Peak. But Amadeus had appeared out of nowhere. His defeat of Marcus had turned everything into an empty talk. Pollux looked at Amadeus, who was following closely behind Aurelius Candida, walking with light steps. A trace of helplessness flashed across Polox's wicked eyes. He still had the confidence to compete with Marcus. However, he didn't have much confidence in his ability to compete with Amadeus, who had destroyed Marcus with a single punch. Furthermore, he had a feeling that in the past 10 days, Amadeus's strength had once again improved significantly. On Polox's left was a tall and slender young man who was 17 or 18 years old. He wore a long blue robe that fluttered in the wind. His facial features were handsome and angular. His eyes were deep and gave people a gentle and lively feeling. It could be said that this blue cloth man had a unique temperament. It was very easy for him to get close to others and make them feel good about him. He was Sextus Saturn a famous, modest gentleman among the 600 servant disciples in Red Reed Peak. He was two years earlier than Amadeus, and he was at the peak of the late fourth layer. He was undoubtedly the number three person in the Red Reed Peak. There was another man with a muscular body, but he didn't look very tall and sturdy. He was 18 years old and had a handsome face. His eyes were as deep as the stars, and his nose was long and straight. He had a faint smile on his face, giving people a feeling that he was easy to get along with. However, this was just his appearance. Atticus Cassia was famous for being temperamental. He and Marcus were known as the two tyrants from Red Reed Peak. Ever since he went up to the mountain, he had injured and crippled many servant disciples. On the left side of Atticus, Cassia, there was a handsome young man in white clothes. He was not much older than Amadeus. He looked free and unrestrained, like a prodigal son. Aldolphus Decimus was very talented, even stronger than Pollux. He and Amadeus were both new beginner warriors. In just a year, he had great combat technique and it was obvious how talented he was. The last person was a burly man who was as strong as a lion. He had a face full of sparse stubble and
and he looked like an uncle in his 30s. In his bright eyes, there was a trace of melancholy and confusion. Rufus Drusus was the elder brother of many servant disciples in Red Reed Peak. Five years had passed. This was his last chance. If he couldn't pass this test, he would have to leave. But his talent was only above average. He couldn't be compared to Pollux and Sextus Saturn. He had been training hard for five years. He had barely broken through to the fourth Empyrean stage. It would be difficult for him to break through. The peak bound had the intention of reaching the heavens in a single bound. It was a thousand feet tall, like a peerless divine spear that pierced into the clouds. Its scenery was very beautiful. And in the mist was like smoke that lingered on the mountain top. The foot of the mountain was filled with flowing water, and old vines wrapped around the ancient trees. It was a very quiet place. The ledge that Amadeus and the others were about to explore was built halfway up the mountain of the peak bound. When Amadeus and the others arrived at the foot of the mountain, they saw that there were already many peak bound standing or sitting on the ground in front of them. So many people, so many experts. There were at least a thousand participants. There wasn't a single weakling among these people. Pollux was considered one of the top geniuses in Red Reed Peak. But in this place, he was at most just an ordinary genius. Unknowingly, many people's faces were filled with bitterness. And the oldest among them, Rufus Drusus, had a look of despair on his face. Episode 14 Three Heroes and One Immortal This is the only elite academy. If all seven branches were gathered here, what a grand occasion it would be. Amadeus raised his eyebrows, and a serious expression appeared on his face. The gladiator of the Mithraea warrior sect had seven personal disciples. These seven personal disciples were from Sicilia, Hispania, Gallia, Macedonia, and Cyprus. Today, the competition belonged to the elite, and among the seven major training schools, the breakthrough competition belonged to none other than the peak pulse. The strength of the elite academy couldn't even be considered as one of the top three. It was only slightly stronger than the peak pulse. It seems that like I have really underestimated everyone in the world. It was at this moment, the complacency that was born from Amadeus's rapid advancement vanished. With his current meager training, he couldn't even defeat a servant disciple. So what right did he have to be arrogant? However, only then will be there be a challenge. One day, I will surpass everyone and become invincible under the heavens. In an instant, Amadeus' heart was filled with combat intent. It was as if an ancient desolate beast had completely 
completely awakened in his body. With such a heaven-defying divine skill, he would definitely become a great gladiator in this life. Let the mountain ledge witness my rise. Everyone, look. That's the Northern Peak steam. The disciples of the Northern Peak are here. The disciples of the Northern Peak are here. All of a sudden, cries of alarm rang out from the crowd. They saw a group of people walking over from the mountain trail in the southwest direction. There were more than 50 of them, and they were more than 10 times as many as Amadeus's group. As expected of the level one servicemen's peak, it's much more powerful than the Red Reed Peak. Looking at the huge army of northern peaks that was like a soaring griffin, Amadeus couldn't help but sigh with emotion. The Red Reed Peak was the lower grade servicemen's peak. Whether it was the number of disciples or the quality of training, a peak gladiator like Pollux was undoubtedly the second strongest person on Red Reed Peak. However, on the Northern Peak, he wasn't even in the top 10. That man is one of the three heroes, Titus Julius. He really does have an imposing appearance. He can be called a god among men. In the middle of a group, the man stood proudly. He was a young man, about 16 or 17 years old, wearing a blue robe. His face was cold as ace. He stood like a crane among chickens, and the other warriors gave him a wide berth. His presence faintly formed a vacuum and no one dared to approach him. Titus Julius? Amadeus murmured, and a trace of doubt flashed across his eyes. After all, he was a new disciple who had just entered the order and had been training hard for the past year. He had almost never left the Red Reed Peak so his knowledge of the situation on the other servicemen's peaks were limited. Amadeus, you might not know this, Sexton Saturn said, but the three heroes are publicly acknowledged to be the strongest people in the academy. Every single one of them is a top genius who possesses the eighth grade bloodline. An 8th grade bloodline user? The strongest three people in my academy? The corner of Amadeus's mouth curled up and revealed a smile. The fighting spirit in his heart soared. Right at that moment, another cry of alarm sounded. It's coming. It's Southern Peak's team. Southern Peak was just an ordinary second grade serviceman's peak. And they were almost at the end, at the bottom of the second 18th grade serviceman's peaks. In the past, there had been nothing special about them. But this year, no one dared to look down on them because one of three heroes, Tiberius Gabinus, came from this peak. 
They saw Southern Peak servants, disciples surrounding a person like moon surrounding by stars. This person's skin was as white as marble. His facial features were handsome and angular. His tall and slender figure was perfectly portrayed by his armor. His temperament was cold, like a moving iceberg. Tiberius Gabinus. You are really just like your name, so cold that it scares people. The servant disciples who were close to him trembled all over, and a bone piercing chill penetrated straight into their hearts. Terrifying. It was truly terrifying. Just the power he casually released. Made their hands and feet stiffen. Once he unleashed his full strength, they would be frozen into ice statues without any chance of resisting. Was this the three heroes' true strength? The group of servant disciples felt a vague but deep sense of loss. It was only now that they understood that there were nothing compared to these true geniuses. The disciples of the Southern Peak are here. The disciples of the Southern Peak are here. Look, that's Nero Felix. A group of people slowly walked over from the northeast, as one of the only two level one servicemen's peak in the academy. Southern Peaks group was not any smaller than Northern Peaks, yet they seemed to be slightly better than Northern Peak. The group was more than a hundred feet long, and there were probably no less than sixty people in it. Among the crowd, there was a young man. His eyes shone brightly like the stars in the sky. His figure was tall and straight. Wearing a yellow robe, he seemed so noble. Every step he took made it seem as if he had endless magic, and he was stepping on everyone's heartbeats. This young man wasn't anyone like else. He was the last hero who was on par with Titus Julius and Tiberius Gabinus. Nero Felix. I wonder who is the strongest among the three heroes. In an instant, this question had exploded among the crowd. Needless to say, it is Tiberius Gabinus from the Southern Peak. Legend has it that his family's martial skill, the ice bomb. Had already reached mastery. Even an ordinary sixth Empyrean gladiator would not be able to withstand a single palm strike from him. <laughs> In terms of strength, Nero Felix and the senior gladiator from Southern Peak are the strongest. Don't forget, he is a ruthless man. Who has killed nine sixth-grade exotic beasts in a row? Bullshit. Titus of Northern Peak is the strongest man in the elite academy. Suddenly, a voice attracted everyone's attention. Everyone seems to have forgotten one person. Although the three heroes are strong, Julia Albus is not simple. How could we forget about her? The three heroes are powerful, but if he were to fight Julius Albus, the outcome would be hard to predict. In my opinion, Julia Albus is the number one person 
in the academy. Amadeus' footsteps paused, and a trace of doubt climbed onto his handsome face. There was also a trace of curiosity. Who is this Julia Albus? She can actually be compared to three heroes? Julia Albus is the number one figure in the Eastern Peak. According to legend, she is as talented as the three heroes, perhaps even more so. If she were not a woman, I'm afraid the three heroes would have to change to the four heroes. Sextus Saturn, who was standing to the side, once again answered the doubts in Amadeus's heart. Eastern Peak? Is that Eastern Peak? Amadeus's voice carried a hint of curiosity. Eastern Peak was the most special of the hundred servant disciple summits in the academy. It was unlike the other servant disciple summits, which had different grades. Its status was extraordinary, and it seemed to have the power to rule over two level one servicemen's peaks, Northern Peak and Southern Peak. At the same time, it was also the holy land in the hearts of countless servant disciples, because it was the only female servant disciple summit in the academy. Right at that moment, a deafening cheer erupted from the crowd. The sound was so loud that it seemed like it could overturn the heavens. Ah, look! It's the Julia of Eastern Peak. What? Julia of Eastern Peak is here. Let me see. Is the one in the middle Julia Albus? Oh, she is too beautiful. She is really too beautiful. If I could be with her, I would be willing to live ten years less. Ten years? Even if I lived thirty years less, I wouldn't be sad. Under the scorching gazes of the servant disciples, a group of people slowly walked over from the southeast peak bound. The leader was a woman of about 35 or 36 years old. She was very beautiful. Her eyes were moving. And there was a smile at the corner of her mouth. She was indescribably charming. Her body was tightly wrapped in a light purple skirt. The skirt revealed her sexy legs, making everyone's mouth go dry. They wished they could hold her in her arms. Behind her was a group of beautiful girls. There were more than 300 of them, and each of them were extremely beautiful making everyone's heart palpitate. Is that Eastern Peak's Julia Albus? She's so beautiful. Among the crowd, Amadeus was stunned. Julia was in the bloom of youth, about 16 or 17 years old. Her skin was as white as snow, and her eyebrows were like a painting. She wore a long, white dress, and her neck was soft and beautiful. Her bright eyes flashed, and they were lively, as if she could speak through them. Even though Amadeus's current state of mind far exceeded that of the other servant disciples, he couldn't help but stare at her. He couldn't deny it. Julia was definitely the most beautiful woman he had ever seen.
Episode 15 Gambling Amadeus took another deep look at Julia and slowly withdrew his gaze. He noticed that Master Aurelius was looking at the group of people from Southern Peak. As they slowly entered the arena, there was something wrong with Master Aurelius's expression. He was looking at the person in the lead. It was a young man in his 30s. His skin was as white as marble. And his facial features were feminine. If he had worn women's clothing, not many people would have thought that he was a man. A vaguely sinister light flashed within his triangular eyes. Oh, isn't this Aurelius? It's been a year since we last met. The leader of the group, the feminine young man, suddenly exclaimed in surprise. The group from Southern Peak was standing hundreds of feet away from Amadeus and the others. So it's Barbo. We haven't seen each other for a long time. But you still look as elegant as ever. Aurelius said that with a very cold face. If Amadeus hadn't looked at Aurelius, he would have really thought the two of them were old friends. Aurelius, you haven't been to Southern Peak for a few years. Lyrong always talks about you. Barbo smiled and said that. Barbo... I miss Lirong too. Aurelius's voice sounded like he was gnashing his teeth in anger. His fists were tightly clenched and his veins were bulging. There's a problem. There's definitely a problem between these two people. Amadeus and the others were right. Aurelius Candida, Paulinus Barbo, and Yuan Lirong used to be very good friends. But now, Aurelius hated them very much. Five years ago, Aurelius was lucky enough to find out about the ruins of an ancient cave. He kindly invited Barbo and Lirong to go with him. He never thought that Barbo and Lirong would be ungrateful. In order to monopolize the treasure, they actually joined forces to launch a sneak attack on him. In an instant, he was severely injured. If it wasn't for the fact that he still had some means to protect his life, perhaps he would have died a long time ago. During these past few years, he had always wanted to take revenge on the two of them. Unfortunately, their training improved by leaps and bounds. After obtaining the cave dwelling's treasures, he was no match for them. Since that's the case, why don't you follow me back to Southern Peak after the competition is finished? Let my servants cook a few good dishes, and we can go drink together. Barbo. I really appreciate your good intentions. 
Aurelia said with a fake smile. If he really wanted to go to Southern Peak with Barbo, he would probably never come back. Aurelius wanted to kill this vicious pair. They also wanted to kill Aurelius as soon as possible. Barbo gave Aurelius a meaningful glance. He turned his eyes to Amadeus and the other three men behind Candida and smiled. Aurelius, are these the genius disciples of Red Reed Peak? Hmm, not bad. All of them are outstanding. And their futures are limitless. Hearing this, anger flashed across Amadeus's and the other five's eyes. They weren't fools. How could they not hear Barbo's sarcasm? Candida's face turned completely black with anger. <laughs> it's all thanks to you. Barbo and his wife had been suppressing Red Reed Peak all these years. Usually there were 15 people who had the qualifications to go to the breakthrough competition in the third grade Servant Disciple Peak. And there were at least 11 or 12 of them. Unlike Red Reed Peak, which only had six people. They were not even comparable to some fourth grade servant disciple peaks. He he. Aurelius is too polite. We are friends, so we should support each other. Barbo smiled casually, as if he did not hear the sarcasm in Candida's words. Suddenly, Barbo's facial expression changed slightly. He stared at Amadeus and said, Sixth layer early stage? Sixth layer early stage? Aurelius's heart trembled, and a trace of shock flashed across his eyes. Compared to Barbo, his training base was much weaker and he couldn't see through Amadeus's true training bis. Blux and the others behind Candida were even more shocked. It was as if they had seen a ghost from the legends. The proud Nero Felix couldn't help but look at Amadeus again. Amadeus was a six layer early stage, not to mention the elite. There were very few people in the Mithraea warrior sect who could defeat Amadeus. Even the three heroes were only on par with Amadeus in terms of training. Great. Amadeus had really given me a big surprise. No wonder he was able to injure Marcus with one punch. <laughs> Although he was shocked, Candida was glad in his heart. With Amadeus' sixth Empyrean early stage training base, besides the three heroes, it could be said that he had rarely met a worthy opponent. In the upcoming battle, it wasn't impossible for him to make it into the top five, not to mention the top ten. This time, Red Reed Peak might even surpass two levels in a row. He would directly advance to the second grade Servant Disciple Peak. Right at that moment, Barbo turned his gaze and smiled at Candida. Aurelius, they're about to accept the challenge. 
how about we make a bet to increase their interest? Barbo? What do you mean? Candida frowned and felt uneasy. Aurelius, your disciple isn't even 20 years old. But he has already seen and has such an impressive training base. To be quite honest, he is definitely a rare hero in this world. As for me, Felix is also a genius. Let's have a small bet on their breakthrough competition. Let's see who can walk further in the competition. I wonder if Aurelius is willing to do so. A bet? You rarely met a worthy opponent among the servant disciples in the Elite Academy. Amadeus, who was a six-layer early stage, was indeed not bad. However, compared to Nero Felix, who was one of the three heroes, there was still a big gap between them. If he really agreed to this bet, he would have absolutely no chance in winning. Just as Candida was preparing to organize his words and reject the bet, Barbo spoke once again. Thinking back to that one year, Aurelius had that heroic spirit. Who would have had thought that in his middle age, he really wouldn't even dare to accept this small bet? It's really heartbreaking. He shook his head as he spoke. From time to time, he would even cover his chest with a pain expression on his face. Forget it. Forget it. Just pretend I didn't say anything. The bet is off. Barbo, wait. I'll take the bet. Even if he knew he would lose... He would never allow Barbo to show off in front of him. All right. Barbo narrowed his eyes, and a trace of smugness flashed across his face. Since it's a bet, there will naturally be some prizes. Candida's heart sank slightly. He knew that this bet would not be so simple. How about this? Let's bet ten spirit stones. Hearing this, Candida's chest heaved up and down like a bellows. His eyes were about to spit fire. Barbo said it lightly, but that was not the truth. Spirit stones were the crystals of the spirit of heaven and earth. They were essential for the training of a great gladiator. And they were also the currency used by them. The sect gave a master of the third grave servicemen's peak. Like him, only one spirit stone a year later. Plus other income. Five a year was the limit. Excluding the daily needs of his training... Ten spirit stones was almost half of his savings. Aurelius, as the master of a mountain peak, a mere ten spirit stones should not be considered much to you. All right. Ten spirit stones. Candida's heart was bleeding. But he still gritted his teeth and agreed. At this point, there was no longer any room for him to go back on his word. All right. Aurelius is generous. Then it's settled. Barbo shouted, but there was a flash of pride in his heart. Seeing Barbo swaggering away, 
Candida, who had calmed down, immediately felt a wave of regret. With Nero Felix around, he had no chance of winning this bet. Ten spirit stones. That was more than half of his savings. Impulse was the devil. Amadeus, I'm counting on you. Now, as long as you can defeat Nero Felix, I won't treat you badly. Candida turned his eyes to Amadeus and said solemnly, Since the bet had already been made, there was no point in regretting it. He could only hope that Amadeus could create another miracle. Nero Felix, one of three heroes? Looking out of the corner of his eye at Nero Felix, who stood out like a crane above chickens, Amadeus said solemnly, Master, I will do my best. Nero Felix, one of the three heroes, was not someone to be thriffled with. Even Titus Julius and Tiberius Gabinus, who were equally famous, did not dare to say that they could definitely defeat Nero Felix. Amadeus, just try your best. Candida nodded slightly. He did not say that Amadeus would definitely defeat Southern Peak. He also knew in his heart that with Amadeus' strength, it was possible for him to compete for the top ten. But to compete with an eighth grade bloodline like the three heroes, that would have been a whimsical idea. Barbo walked a few dozen feet with light steps. He looked at Nero Felix, who was like a shining star in the starry sky, and said with a faint smile, Felix, it's all up to you now. His expression was slightly respectful, and he seemed to be trying to please Felix. Nero Felix didn't say anything. Instead, he casually swept a glance at Amadeus. A deep disdain flashed across his eyes. They were dark. Did Amadeus think that he could challenge him? Just because he had the same training base as him? He was truly naive. Nero Felix turned his gaze toward Gabinus and Julius. Among the thousands of servant disciples present, only these two could be his match. The rest of them, they were destined to be the three heroes' stepping stones. An hour had passed, and nearly 2,000 disciples had arrived one after another. It was at this moment that there was a sea of people well below the peak bound. Candida, Barbo, and the master had left the scene one after another. It appears that they had retreated to the side. At this moment, a voice could be called a great voice sounding from midair. Are 
all the mountain peak servants' disciples already here? Amadeus and the thousands of servant disciples could all feel a powerful spiritual energy being emitted from below the foot of the mountain. The spiritual energy had almost covered the entire area within a few miles. Amadeus couldn't help but raise his head and glance at it, staring. He was extremely shocked. He saw a person walking in the air toward him. It was a middle-aged man in his 40s, and he was wearing white clothes. He was floating in the clouds. His footsteps seemed very calm. He had a leisurely stroll, but his steps were steady. He was slow, but he did not lose his dignity. Suddenly, a huge pressure filled Amadeus' body, making it hard for him to breathe.